God's best and to students and teachers. Welcome to our online Espreha Chapel. And this time we have special programs. And in the first one, we're going to have the worship team led by Pa Agung. Also, there's a message from uh, Mr. Brett and some announcements made by Miss Hazel, also Mr. Terry. And then the last one, there will be special productions uh, made by Mr. Paul. Okay, so stay tuned and enjoy it. to you happy birthday to Tadio from grade 6 Yunzu Lee from grade 7 Nadia and Xiu from grade 8 and Glenn from grade 10 happy birthday guys happy, happy birthday, birthday. Hey everyone, so as we all know, International Week is coming up and yeah, Student Council along with some of your teachers have prepared some very very fun games. So yeah, look forward to that. So some games you should be expecting to play next week is one animal country guessing game where you're going to be given a list of different animals and you have to guess where they're known from. Two is language guessing game which is pretty self-explanatory. You have to tell us the meaning of each word. And third is international cooking competition where you get to make and create any type of dish or cuisine you like and you get to show off your skills. For more information, check out our Instagram and our email. And don't forget to join the games because you're gonna have a chance to win 100,000 GoPay Top Up. Please stay tuned for more announcements from our teachers. Hello everyone, let's prepare our hearts and minds for today's chapel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we worship you. We thank you that you're a, a loving God, that you, you're a great provider and you've given us opportunities to come together and uh, worship as a school community. We thank you that uh, we have technology and we have uh, ways to still fellowship with one another. We thank you for opportunities to come together every week to meditate and, and listen to your word. Thank you, Lord, for, for our speaker today. Pray that you guide our hearts and our thoughts and our meditation on the message that we are going to hear. We thank you, Lord, that there are, there are multiple opportunities for us to learn uh, in school, uh, with our relationships, and at home with the people that we spend uh, the most of our days, most of our time with these days, we pray, Lord, for for your blessing and your your Holy Spirit to work in our lives to continue to help us to learn how to love one another and to to continue to grow in our relationship with you. We thank you, Father, for for our health. And we pray for your your continued blessing on on our community. In your name, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Through you, blind eyes are open 
Club. Hi everybody, Mr. Brett here, um, chapel speaker for uh, this week. Uh, I was asked to speak a few weeks. Oh, a few weeks ago, I was asked to um, prepare a message about. What, you know, I was told, you know, in the in our school documents and things like that, we talk about how we strive to have people at our school flourish. We use the term flourishing learner, or for teachers and staff, be a flourishing employee or flourishing teacher or staff member. What does that actually mean? So I've been thinking about that the last few weeks. And I wasn't quite sure what to talk about. Um, I wasn't sure like where to go with that. And what's interesting is last week I was talking with some of our Pehaha students. And as I was talking with them, I also had this memory of um, one time when I was at a movie theater. And it was a random Tuesday night. And this guy walked past. And I recognized him and I realized, oh, that's Sean White. And I don't know if that name means anything to you. But uh, Sean White, who you see here, he is... Uh, He's known for being one of the most successful skateboarders and snowboarders, uh, I think, in history, actually. Uh, very successful. I don't know what his first sport was, but he's 
highly successful around the world in both skateboarding and snowboarding. Um, in fact, he's been in the Olympics, the Winter Olympics, four times as a snowboarder. And in three of those Olympics, he's won the gold medal. That's a pretty good success rate. Um, I mean, I think hopefully all of you can figure out that 75% of the time, he's won a gold medal when he's gone to the Olympics. He's also gone to the X Games, which is one of the top um, places to compete for skateboarding and for snowboarding. Um, the best athletes from around the world compete at the X Games every you know, every year, every couple of years. And he's over the years, he's won over to, or he's won twenty three different medals um, in those two event, two uh, sports. I think fifteen for gold medals. So very successful. And for uh, the last few days, I was thinking I need to talk about Sean White. He's flourish. He's a flourishing person because not only is he super successful um, in athletics in two different sports, actually world class, top of top in the world, but he also is a successful uh, businessman. He's, uh, he's, there's two video games that he's part of that are quite successful. I'm sure he's made a ton of money off of them. And also he's part of a band that's, uh, and that's not like the most famous band in the world, but it has gone around, he has gone around and toured around, around the U.S. at least, uh, been part of a number of festivals. And so I've been thinking, I need to talk about Sean White. He's a pretty good example of someone who is flourishing. The reason I thought, well, I need to check out, like, what does it actually mean to flourish? I'm curious, like, what would... Um, like the dictionary say. So I started looking up, what does flourishing mean? And I was actually looking for a definition that would match up with how I view somebody like Sean White. So I, uh, I, I took, I went to my friend, Mr. Wikipedia, and according to him, uh, I just took a few excerpts from the page on Wikipedia about flourishing. It says flourishing is about having positive emotions, positive psychological functioning, positive social functioning. Most of the time, I like that. Not all the time, but most of the time, uh, you experience positive emotions and functioning. That's what it means to flourish, according to Wikipedia. It goes on a little bit later to say it's about mental health. Flourishing describes or it measures your mental health and well-being. Wikipedia also goes on to say, well, this is the opposite of flourishing. The opposite is someone who's languishing or someone who feels like their life is hollow or empty. Or another way to put that is without purpose. So I started looking at this de definition and, and realized, I don't know if this actually meet, matches up with Sean White. Um, I happened to see him that one time and he seemed like a somewhat positive person. I have no reason to think he's a bad guy. I don't know anything about his mental health. I don't know about his psychological functioning, even his emotional health. So I don't know if that matches up, if I would say. He seems like he's resilient um, because he's been quite successful in two difficult sports. He must be resilient. Um, I, I would assume that he has purpose in life, uh, like that last part, but I don't actually know. So as I was thinking about him more, I realized, actually, I think I'm confusing. I'm saying myself here. I think I often confuse flourishing with being successful. And that in my mind, somebody who flourishes is somebody um, who does really well in multiple things. So in a school context, to, in order to flourish, you have to get good grades and you have to be on a sports team, or you have to be on a sports team and part of a club, or you have to be part of a club and then start a service project, or maybe not even start a service project, but be a member of a service project, or maybe two or three, and then have teachers like you. You have to have multiple things that are going on in order to flourish. But I don't actually know if that's the definition after looking at Wikipedia. Obviously, Wikipedia is not the only place we should look. Um, Obviously, scripture is one of the places that we should also look. Um, you know, flourishing is described in the Bible. And so I was actually reminded of, of a person who actually visited um, uh, Jakarta a few years ago. He's actually a, a, a pastor, an elder in a, a church in the United States. Um, I have never met him in person, but many, I have myself and many of your teachers heard him speak a couple of years ago. His name is Hugh Welchel. And he started this, uh, or he's uh, the leader of this institute called this Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics. They put out some good information. You probably think it's boring. I kind of enjoy some of it sometimes. I like boring things every once in a while. But he, he writes about flourishing. And what does it mean, according to scripture, to flourish? He breaks it down into four components. You can read here. I won't read it all for you. But he says flourishing um, is something that's not from ourselves. We can't, we can't make ourselves flourish. It's actually um, a gift. And we're blessed when the Lord allows flourishing to happen in our life. It's a gift. 
And it's, it, the Lord is allowing us to see just a taste of what creation was supposed to look like before sin entered the world. So that's one thing we know about flourishing, according to Scripture, is that it's a gift. Um, because of the Holy Spirit, we're allowed to flourish, um, not because of anything we can do. We can't make ourselves flourish. Joining more clubs, playing more sports, getting better grades isn't going to make us flourish because we can't do it on our own. The second part, according to Hugh Welchel, is um, uh, that if when we flourish, it causes us to give glory to the Lord. So if success can be a dangerous way to measure flourishing, because it can be very easy for us as humans, when we're successful, to take that credit for ourselves. But if we're reminded, according to Scripture, flourishing is actually a gift from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit, then it, when we do flourish, we sh our response should be one of thanksgiving. It shouldn't be one of pride. If we're experiencing pride, we're not flourishing. Um, yeah, pride and flourishing don't go together. The third component to flourishing is that biblical flourishing is missional. It's priestly. It's outward focused. All of those are ways of saying it's about other people. It's not about us. You know, so you know, an example, if, you know, oftentimes, like I was just saying myself, Six, I often confuse success and flourishing. They're not the same thing. I often confuse doing a lot of things, being involved in more things, in multiple areas of life. Um, the problem is when we get involved in other areas of life or when we start something new or we do something on the basketball court um, or we get a good grade, it often comes back to us. But flourishing is about other people. How are How is our life... Um, uh, how are we interacting with others? How are we living with others? How are we caring for others? Flourishing and, and um, uh, interacting with others go hand in hand. The final component to flourishing, according to Hugh Welchel and the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics, is that um, flourishing is about all areas of life. But notice, it's not just about the physical areas in life, the things that we can see. It is, like Wikipedia says, about our emotions about our spiritual life, about our psychological life. And, and it also is about material or the things that we see. So flourishing involves, you know, it's not just getting involved in more stuff. It's not just having a well-rounded lifestyle. That's a pretty common thing we often hear, is having a well-rounded lifestyle, having a variety of things to put onto a resume or a CV. That's not an evidence of a flourishing life. It can be, but it's not direct evidence. What is evidence of a flourishing life is how do we live with other people? Um, how do we respond when we're successful? Are we living healthy lifestyles? Are we too focused on one particular area of life? And are, we, are we putting too much focus? That's not evidence of a healthy lifestyle. It's not evidence of flourishing. But as I think it's even more important to remember that we can't actually experience true flourishing unless we have a relationship with the Lord. This comes from scripture, like I said, the, the stuff I was showing you before, while I didn't have verses there to back it up, it does come from scripture. I'll show you one that I think is one of the best examples in scripture. This is Jesus talking, and I think this is the, one of the best examples of, of us realizing, oh yeah, true flourishing comes from somebody higher than us, not from ourselves. Jesus tells us in John 10, these are direct words from Jesus. He says, the thief comes, to steal and kill and destroy. I, Jesus, have come that you all, that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is telling us two things here that really teach us what does it mean to flourish or what does the definition of flourishing mean? What is it all about? Jesus tells us here, I want my people to flourish. Jesus wants you to flourish. Life might not be easy right now for you. There might be reasons why you don't feel like you're flourishing, like you're experiencing a true joy in life. But Jesus is saying, one, I want you to experience that. I want you to experience the way life is supposed to be without sin. And he says, in order for you to experience that, the only way you can experience that is if I am your shepherd, if I'm the person who cares for you, and, and if I, Jesus, have given up my life. And that's what he did. Jesus did lay down his life. He gave up his life 
so that we might experience that perfect relationship with him, with his father, that we might experience what creation is supposed to be, that we might get to experience true flourishing. So unfortunately, um, we don't get to experience true flourishing here on earth. That will come in heaven. If you're a believer, we get to look forward to that. That gives us a hope, an encouragement, and a, an expectation or a longing for the future. If you're not a believer, you, you, you still, because of God's grace, his common grace, you get to experience glimpses of true flourishing here on earth. But everlasting, eternal flourishing uh, is not promised. Only for those who do trust and uh, have put their belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. So today I do encourage you um, to, con to contemplate where, where are you in your relationship with the Lord? Um, how are you with that? Um, talk to your teacher. Talk to your homeroom teacher. I'm, I'm happy to talk. Talk to a parent, a friend, a classmate. I would love um, for you to reach out and to talk more about this topic. Um, but that's my prayer for you all. I, I do pray that our school, that we would have we get to experience glimpses of, of flourishing, both now and eternal flourishing in the future. Uh, thanks for paying attention. Have a great weekend. Uh, I pray that you would get to see just a, a glimpse this weekend of that flourishing. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Paul, or you can call me Mr. N.E. from PhD department and also a supervisor from Pihaha. Today I'm so glad to see you here. You know what? When home learning program start until now, this campus is so quiet and empty. That's why I believe you miss this campus, you miss school, you miss your classmates, classroom, your friends, even the food from canteen. And I believe you also miss your teachers. That's why today I will just walk around and bother some teachers, ask some questions to them. Just want to sh make sure you still remember your teachers or you can know them better. But I just want to know if your teacher also miss you or not. You ready? Let's go. And now everyone, we are going to Baakun classroom. Anyone know him? Let's go to his classroom and see what he's doing right now. Guys, let's go. We can see Tristan here. Hi, Tristan. Hello, Baakun. Hello. Hello, I'm doing the video for our chapel yeah. and I have some questions to ask you. Sure. So there are three questions. The first one is, uh, please introduce yourself. And second one, please tell us how many years you've been staying here. And the last one, please tell one thing you love the best about Sanctu. Okay. So first, my name is Joshua Agun Graha. You can call me Agun. I've been here since 2006. So you can imagine how long I've been here. <laughs> and what I like most. Oh, yes. <laughs> What I like most about SP High is the campus. campus. It's very green, fresh, and you can see the scenery is very beautiful, mountains there. Mm -hmm. So, and also the students, uh, they are so friendly, they are very respectful, and also the teachers and staff, uh, this is like the best place for us to be. Okay, thank you, Bakun. Do you miss students? Yes, I miss them a lot. Uh, I want to chat with them, want to practice together, play music, and yeah, <laughs> just have fun together. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Bakun, for your time okay. and have a good day. We will you see you in guys. chapel. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Okay, guys, let's go to the next room. Okay, guys, now let's go to Young Kid. Anyone know her? So let's get in. Oh, she's here. Hi, Hi, Hi. Buyangki. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm doing the video and uh, I have some questions for you on, on to answer. Okay. So the first question is, how many years have you been staying here? Uh, sorry, 
Please introduce yourself. Okay, hello, my name is Yanti Hendar. I'm teaching economics and business management and Indo studies. Wow, so this is your uh, how many years? Been I've been um, teaching in SPH for almost six years. Six years? Yes. Whoa. So, please tell us one thing you love the best about Sanctuary. Okay, uh, for SPH Sentul City, I love the community. Um, I guess my, uh, my colleagues, um, uh, we support each other. Mm -hmm. um, I love the students. Uh, that's the bell. Yeah, that's I love, the bell, guys. Yeah. I love the students. Um, all my students are good, are nice and good. Okay. Thank you, Priyanti. Do you miss students? Yes, I miss my students a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, we all miss you guys. And thank you, Priyanti. Thank you. That's the bell, guys. Go to the classroom. Okay, we'll see you in chapel. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Priyanti. Thank you. So guys, let's go to the next classroom. Okay everyone, after Buyanti, now we are going to the next teacher and she is... Yeah, it's Ibu Stella. Let's, let's get in. Hey, hello! Hi, Ibu Stella. Let's go to your class. Hello, who's there? Hi, Ibu Stella. Say hi to the camera. Hi! Okay, so uh, I'm doing the video for our chapel, uh -huh. and I have some questions I want to ask you. Okay. So the first question, please introduce yourself briefly. Okay, my name is Ibu Stella, and I'm the math teacher for yeah for for high school. <laughs> okay. So how many years been staying here in Saint Two? I started my work at 2005, mm -hmm. so uh, been teaching before for 10 years, and after that in 2019 I came back. I came back again, so okay. it's been two years. So in total, I think almost two, 12 years in. Wow! In a so since you've been staying here so long, please tell us one thing you love the best about Sanctu. I think the students and then the community here, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I found everybody is solid and uh, I mean, I have, yeah, I mean, I can see that uh, the relationship is really good between mm -hmm. students and teachers and yeah, and that with everybody here. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so do you miss them? Yes, members? of course, of course. That's what I've been telling to my kids, you know, <laughs> in my math class. Okay. And I and I counted like how many days that uh, uh, we've been doing the online learning, and it was oh. like almost eight months we've been doing this. Wow! Yeah, almost four months again, and it's gonna be one year. That's crazy, guys. Crazy, yes, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Stella, for your time, and then we'll see you in chapel. Yeah, bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Paul. Bye, bye. Yes, guys. Let's go to the next classroom.